How do you win a Superflex League? What's the best way to dominate in Superflex in 2023 fantasy football? I'm going to break all that down and more. We're going to talk about drafting in general from the top part of the draft. So if you get pick number one down to probably pick number six, very different strategy at play than if you get a seven through 12. But I do think you can compartmentalize those two approaches if you've got a top seven pick or you got a top six pick or a bottom seven to 12 pick. So let's break down how you can best win and dominate your super flex league in 2023. Dynasty redraft, we're gonna cover it all. Fantasy Football Show begins right now. This is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Smitty. I cannot emphasize enough that if you get a pick one, two, three, four, five in your super flex, you have an extreme advantage to win your league. And I'm going to show you the way, and I showed it last year, to dominate and win your super flex league if you hold a pick one, two, three, four, all the way down to pick number five. Number six kind of overlaps between the two. It depends on what happens in picks one through five. So let's take a look at how to dominate picks one through five. Here's the skinny on the concept. If you were given a number one, two, three, four, or, or five overall pick, you have a massive advantage in that you get one of these big four quarterbacks, okay? One of these big five quarterbacks. Now that Fields is in this conversation, it's really a big five. So picks one through five, you're drafting one of these monsters right here. No matter what, no matter what, I don't want to hear that there's another strategy because there isn't. If you're gifted a one, two, three, four, or five overall pick, and sometimes somebody makes a mistake, and that's why number six overall can be included sometimes because a quarterback might be available. Someone might go JJ. Someone might go Christian McCaffrey. If you're lucky enough to get one of these top five quarterbacks, it gives you the flexibility in super flex. Super flex is different than two mandatory quarterbacks. Most people don't play that format. Most people play the super flex format, the optional second quarterback. If you get one of these monsters, you have the flexibility to go through rounds two, three, four, five with a very loose strategy at quarterback number two. That is the key to what I'm about to explain. The entire video is gonna center around your staple, your anchor, and then you're drafting against traffic in rounds two, three, four, maybe even round five. Drafting against traffic, meaning when everyone's going toward quarterback, and there'll be a lot of people going wide receiver and running back between rounds two and three, but people are gonna freak out. Remember that Mahomes hurts Allen Burrow Fields, that is five players. That means number six through 12 are either gonna be quarterbacks that are, are going a little too high. You can look at Trevor Lawrence and Lamar, especially if Lamar's in a great situation, which we don't know yet, as arguable first round picks, but you're gonna have people that take JJ and Jamar Chase and everybody that takes the players between like eight and 12, six and 12, they're gonna chase quarterback in round two and round three. You don't have to partake in chasing quarterback. Again, in super flex, not mandatory 2QB, in super flex, it's advantageous to have two quarterbacks. Your goal is going to be to try and take a second quarterback. I'm gonna talk about that when we get into rounds you know, three, four, five. But essentially in round two and three, you're going to revert back to what I call normal drafting. Normal draft mode, one QB mode. When you're in round two, your objective is to draft a player that in one QB would go in round one, i.e. Jefferson, Chase, Tyreek Hill, Bijan, who we have in one QB going around eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Those are the players you're targeting in round two. Somebody that in one quarterback lives in round one. And then when you get to round three, you're drafting somebody that in one quarterback lives in round two normally, and you're getting a jump on every single position. And what this ultimately does is at the end of the day, when you look at somebody's super flex team, you traditionally go, okay, it looks kind of weak in certain spots, but because it's two QB, I understand why it looks a little weak. You spread it out a little bit, trying to accumulate two quarterbacks, right? This approach, you're already ahead of the game at quarterback. You're gonna be ahead of the game at your running back or wide receiver position that you take in the second round here, or Travis Kelsey, whoever it is. You're gonna be ahead at this spot, so what ends up happening is your, your team looks like a dominating one QB team where there's only one quarterback mandatory, and you still have the quarterback because you're dominating and drafting against traffic in round two, in round three, possibly round four. And we'll talk about what to do at quarterback two because again, your objective is to get two quarterbacks because it is very advantageous to have two Two quarterbacks and a super flex. Most people that win have a second quarterback, a really good second quarterback. We're going to address that. Redraft Dynasty, this doesn't change. Look at every one of these quarterbacks here. They're young. They're the future. Mahomes, Hurts, Allen, Burrow, Fields, they're all young. 
The changing of the guard at quarterback doesn't change at all. Dynasty redraft doesn't even matter. The only difference will be some of the guys in between in rounds two, three, four will be ordered different. Guys like Henry and Dalvin Cook and Cooper Cup, they'll fall a lot further. Guys like Watson, London will creep up a little bit. Alave, Garrett Wilson will creep up a little bit. But the approach and strategy is identical in Dynasty and redraft and even more powerful in Dynasty because you get this one quarterback that's going to dominate the position. And while everybody scoops up mediocre quarterbacks in two and three, freaking out because they went wide receiver or something up here or a quarterback they they like, but they don't feel like they're first round worthy. This is where you make or break your draft round two, round three, and probably round four, depending on where the quarterbacks are going. A good rule of thumb is that if a player like, let's say London goes in round five in a one QB, he goes around later in a two QB. So round six, if a guy like like Christian Watson goes at 4.3 to 4.5 in a 1 QB he's going in round 5 in a in a 2 QB because there's about 12 quarterbacks that get pushed into the top two and a half rounds that normally aren't there in a 1 QB league Mahomes Josh Allen Jalen Hurts all go in the top 24 in a 1 QB league they will in 2023 so if you think about those guys are already there but if you shove in another 12 or so so you're talking about 12 to 15 quarterbacks going by by mid third round at least you have a natural push down of about 12 players for the entire board that's why a player at 4.5 lives at 5.5 in a 2 QB league versus a 1 QB league Jameer Gibbs going in 4.5 5 to 4.12 territory now goes as a fifth rounder. Some leagues take more quarterbacks than than other leagues, you know, and they go heavy, heavy, heavy. And other leagues are just moderate quarterback drafting for for the first couple rounds and then they get back to normal. But by round six, seven, it kind of tends to get back to normal. This is where you win your league. Round two, round three, round four, round five. And round five or round four might be where you take your second quarterback. But round two is where you're taking your first round talent from a normal one QB mindset. And your round three players should normally live in round two in a one QB situation and your round four player should normally live in round three in a one QB environment. Given you're getting one of these guys right here, you have a huge head start. It's almost like you're you're granted a free player getting a top five or top six overall pick and then the race begins in round two and everybody's so far behind they're taking this, this talent that doesn't belong where they're drafting but they're scared because of the scarcity and you're getting to work with some of the guys that belong in the top five overall and you get your choice between a couple players that belong in literally the 7 to 10 overall range outside of a, a 2QB mindset. It's crazy. I deployed this strategy. I, I said this is how you win a super flex league last year. And I deployed this. I took Mahomes at number, I think it was number 6 or 5. And in that draft, I drafted an absolute monster of a squad. Here's a little footage from that video. 30 seconds, 31 seconds left, and we are a go. 50 seconds. Okay, so it went It went Josh Allen, number one. Josh Allen, you can see it at the bottom corner. Josh Allen went 1.1. Yeah, yeah, I'm really hoping that these quarterbacks fall. I don't think they will. If we we, we look at this, it's Mahomes, Herbert. Don't, I'm just hoping. I'm hoping Burrow, who's ranked so down, down, down there. He's so far down there. I'm just hoping Burrow falls, but we'll see. JT goes off the board at the two pick. So totally ignoring the quarter. Maybe we're going to get lucky with Joseph Cigar Smoking Burrow. Christian McCaffrey, these guys aren't going heavy quarterback. They're not going heavy quarterback. Your boy Smitty's not that far away from Joseph Burrow. But for good luck, I'm going to put this. This is like a cigar smoking Joe Burrow, okay? Najee Harris, Najee Harris, we're going to be... We're gonna be okay. They're gonna draft quarterback. We're gonna be going against traffic. It went J. It went Josh Allen, J.T. Christian McCaffrey, Najee Harris. For good luck. This is so far. Smoking a cigar is working out pretty well so far. For Joe Burrow, who are we going? Is it gonna be Derrick Henry? Keep the running back trend going. Keep the running back trend going. Give me Joseph Burrow from the seven pick. Are you guys? Are you guys seeing what's happening? Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Herbert. Herbert went, we got Mahomes or Joe Burrow. This is a super flex. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I feel like this is my lucky cigar. Okay. I mean, we got Mahomes or Burrow. We got Mahomes or Burrow. I would have traded out of the seven pick and I would have been Smitty disapproved. I would have been so angry at myself if I traded out of the seven pick. Unbelievable. Oh, I want to hit this Joseph Burrow. Get people getting Burrow buttons so bad. We're going to be drafting against traffic very, very soon, which means that we're going to be in an unbelievably good position. Mahomes, we got Joseph Burrow. People are getting burrowed left and right, and people are going to remember it. Get burrowed.
unbelievable to get Joseph Cigar Smoking Burrow at the seven pick in a super flex draft. These guys, this is supposed to be an expert draft. This is supposed to be an expert super flex draft. Take a look. I won't bore you with the entire details of of the uh, the entire draft, but the team that was assembled was Joe Burrow, DeAndre Swift. We had Ramondre Stevenson and we traded him for Walker, if I remember correctly, in a one for one trade. Or maybe we give up a maybe we gave up a bench quarterback or something in that. But that was, I think, the only trade I did on the year. So I had Tyreek Hill, St. Brown, Knox, Ayuk, uh, Pacheco, Trevor Lawrence is our second QB, uh, who we took late in the strategy that I'm trying to explain right now, that Aaron Rodgers late or Derek Carr late or, or Anthony Richardson late. We got Trevor Lawrence late in conjunction with Joe Burrow in the mid to late round one in this draft. So this is uh, this was the semifinals. I believe we, we won 146. To, uh, I forget. We smashed them, though. You can see the scores on the left there. The team ended up being Joe Burrow, Swift, Walker, uh, Tyreek Hill, St. Brown, Knox, IU, Pacheco, Trevor Lawrence. We had a pretty decent bench as well. ESPN doesn't even let you log into your old league anymore. So I, I, I grabbed the old video and I screenshotted. It's a little blurry. The team we were assembling uh, almost near the end. So we had Joe Burrow, Swift, Javante Williams. I forgot about Javante Williams. He got hurt. He was one of our top picks. Tyreek Hill, St. Brown, Kyle Pitts got hurt. I forgot about Kyle Pitts. Stevenson we traded for for Walker. Ayuk, Lawrence. We have uh, Zach Wilson busted. Damian Pierce on the bench. We used him, obviously, throughout the year. Pacheco. Uh, I believe we picked up Pacheco. Uh, Knox down down low dominated with this team. And that's having Swift bust. That's having uh, Javante Williams get injured. That's having Kyle Pitts get injured. And we still crush it. Crush it. Absolutely crush this league. That was the team assembled using this strategy. And it won the championship in this league. Blasted everybody. Then just a night ago, I deployed the same strategy. I got a top six pick and I went quarterback i got joe burrow and then i did what i have been preaching right here i went with a round one normal one qb league round one player in round two i went with a player normally lives in round two and round three and so on and look at the team i assembled one night ago on underdog fantasy promo code smitty i might remind you look at the team i drafted you know in a, in a super flex league go for our and just get another tight end in here this team's fire this team is straight fire, man. Joe Burrow, Anthony Richardson, Sam Howell. And it's super flex again. Bijan, Kenneth Walker, Alvin Kamara. Christian Watson, Drake London, George Pickens, Kyle Pitts, Pat Fryermuth. I, sw I swear, I'm, I'm not just trying to, to pat myself on the back here. I hate some of my drafts. I walk <laughs> out and I say I hate some of my drafts. I literally don't love that team at all. This, I feel like this is one of the best super flex drafts I've had yet on underdog. This is phenomenal. Yeah, the, the Watson and London and picking those water coolers are just stacked. Jeez, to get Camara too was just, and as much as I can't stand him as a, as a person right now. Okay, Smitty, let's say I'm not so lucky to have a, a, a top, uh, top six pick, okay? And again, six becomes a player in this if, let's say, one of those quarterbacks falls. Lamar and, and and Trevor Lawrence are kind of the, the sixth and seventh overall players. But I'm very tempted to go like a, a JJ or a Jamar Chase, right? And then round two, I go with a Bijan, a Garrett Wilson, whatever. And then in round three, I go best player available, probably not a quarterback. And then I try and get Aaron Rodgers or Derek Carr. Preferably preferably both Aaron Rodgers and Derek Carr in back-to-back, -back, uh, you know, fourth and fifth round picks in a redraft. In a dynasty, Aaron Rodgers almost always falls past the, the top of round four and a lot of times into round five because people don't want the, well, what do I do two years from now? They're so in that mindset of win, 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 build, build, build for the future, build young, build a, a young dynasty for the future. Don't go near any older players. I'll worry about quarterback later. I'll develop it later in a dynasty startup. So many dynasty leagues crumble after two years. I'd rather build a whole core of youth in rounds one, two, three, four. Take Aaron Rodgers here. Take another quarterback similar 
to Aaron Rodgers in round six. I mean, you could get a Stafford and A-Rod and then build yourself a team that has Bijan in round two. You take Jamar Chase in round one because, again, super flex, these guys are going to go seven, eight, nine, right? So you get Bijan in round two, Jamar Chase, Kenneth Walker probably going in, in round three because guess what? He goes in round two in a one QB draft, so he's going to get knocked down probably to about the top of three to mid third round. And so you walk out with Chase Bijan Walker and then Alave, who normally goes in round two, three, will easily be there around four for you. So I got Jamar Chase, Bijan Walker, and Alave. And now I can go Aaron Rodgers in round five or round six, depending on if it's Dynasty or Redraft. Either way, I'm taking him. I don't care because I need a quarterback and he's a great value. It doesn't matter that A-Rod doesn't have time left because I don't need him for three, four, five years. I'm getting him at a discount, so I'm understanding he comes with a a, a negative. He comes with a, a short shelf life, and I'm accepting of that because of what it affords me in rounds one, two, three, four, and especially if this is Dynasty, all this still works. None of it really changes except for maybe Walker climbs a little bit, maybe Bijan climbs a little bit, Alave climbs a little bit, because guys like Cooper Cup, they'll get bumped down a little bit, and those guys will rise up, so it's not much different dynasty or redraft it doesn't really matter at the end of the day it's deploying the strategy of if you've got a 7 to 12 pick in your super flex draft i like deploying the risky qb approach now you have to be very cognizant what's happening on the qb suggested pre-rank because if a rod's climbing to a weird value let's say it's redraft and he's climbing to a weird value to where he's like the second player on the suggested overall rank and you're picking and you think you're going to last till your next pick and you got you know a whole fourth and fifth round and you're drafting at the end of round five you're not going to get them that suggested rank is very important so you have to detour and alter your plan accordingly based on the suggested rank of where these quarterbacks are on the overall like even the quarterback the individual quarterback pre selected pre-rank suggested rank is important right that kind of tells you what quarterback's going to go next but on the overall if a rod's very very close and you're on the clock you better take him and in dynasty same thing i just think he falls a lot further he's probably a guarantee to fall in round five or six and in dynasty i don't care he could play two years we don't know we don't know and you don't know how long your league's going to last i don't care how how confident you are oh no i like these guys i know these guys people quit dynasty leagues all the time people especially quit super flex dynasty leagues all the time because once your team's bad, it's really hard to dig yourself out of a hole and and rebuild so people just quit. And then once one or two people quit, you try and repair it for one more year and and bring in fill-ins and three people quit and then the commissioner gives up and the league blows up and you redraft or you just close it. So trust me when I tell you, don't force quarterback early in a super flex dynasty or redraft especially dynasty and see the value in a rod see the value in quarterbacks like Derek carr stafford and if you end up drafting in round four or five in the other scenario where you're given burrow as a top five overall pick you take Bijan in the middle of round two you took kenny walker in the middle of three. You took Alave in the middle of four. Where do you take your quarterback? Same thing. Aaron Rodgers, round five. Aaron Rodgers, round six. Wherever he'll fall. Dynasty. Let's say you, this is a dynasty. A-Rod and Dynasty is going to fall to the top of round six. Or even, he could fall later. But we'll just call it like five to six. So you got to watch that suggested rank. And A-Rod becomes your super sleeper absolute undervalued QB2 and you you can build your QB2 spot via the rest of the draft draft a couple guys that maybe are sleepers for you to, to eventually mold into your QB2 and use Aaron Rodgers for the one or two years that you got him you also might be able to to land a, a rookie Bryce Young might be in round five and he's worth taking after you've already assembled this four headed monster right here I do go Bryce Young if I've got to in round five or six. I do go Anthony Richardson, a.k.a. AR-15, in round five as my second quarterback in a in a redraft. Even a redraft, I consider him. Preferably Young and, and AR-15 go in round six in a redraft. But in Dynasty, they're going top of round five, maybe even earlier. But that is how you in crafty fashion fill your QB2. It's really simple, guys. You get a top five or top six pick in one of Burrow or Fields or any quarterback above. Hurts, Mahomes, Josh Allen. You get a pick one through five or one through six and you get a shot at Burrow, Mahomes, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, or Justin Fields. In any any order you want to rank them, those are your five monster home run no-brainer picks. You flirt with the idea of 
Lamar or Trevor Lawrence. But if you don't get one of those five quarterbacks, you contemplate the approach I just explained, where you go Jamar Chase, potentially. You go a Bijan. You go a Walker. You go a Lave. Essentially, you could deploy the same strategy I just talked about, where Burrow's here instead of Jamar Chase. You just swap out the two players, Burrow and Chase, and you still go with the same game plan. You're just going quarterback. You're just going Aaron Rodgers in round five or six and Young or AR-15 in round five or six or car in round five or six. It's that simple. And that's how you dominate a league in Superflex, Dynasty, or Redraft. But huge advantage to you if you get one of the big five quarterbacks. Now go win your Superflex league and get on over to thefantasyfootballshow.com, which is my bold predictions, my my one-on-one text advice, my trade calculators, my rankings, my year-round rankings, rookie rankings, super rookie rankings, top 200, top 200 dynasty, top 200 redraft, redraft dynasty. I have it all at thefantasyfootballshow.com. So get on over there. I'll see you on the next video. Get out of here. This is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Smitty. Smitty.